everybody, Steven here. Hey guys, this is Alan. And welcome to another episode of Paint Talk with That One Painter. Today it should be called Drywall Talk. <laughs> um, yep, today we're going to be going over Easy Sand and Joint Compound. Joint um, All Purpose. <laughs> if you have a purpose, all purposes. All purposes are in this court. All purposes. <laughs> if you haven't found your purpose in life yet, just buy yourself from all purpose joint compound. <laughs> Find your life's calling. <laughs> Just joking. All right, yep. anyways, drywall repair. Mm -hmm. We do a lot of it. It sometimes doesn't seem to be the most uh, detailed or intricate work, but there is some big do's and don'ts. Um, and in here we have two products we use a lot. Joint compound, this guy here, obviously when we're using it, we usually, this, this would be for a small project. Um, it comes in big bags and we use this mm -hmm. stuff often uh, in, a, in a big tub mm -hmm. too, big there's tubs. a huge tub. Um, bags inside of boxes, it's a <laughs> yeah. box with a bag in it. <laughs> but uh, this here we use a lot for shooting texture in a hopper, um, for, for you know, matching ta yeah, tape and float of, of seams um, on the you, gaps. If uh, you have dry time, like mm -hmm. if, you're, if you, it's a big project, lots yep. of dry time. Yeah, especially like if you had flooding in your house. So we have to hang sheetrock in a lot of areas. You're going to see that we use a lot of this mm -hmm. here for the tape and float and then for actually shooting at the texture, whether that be knockdown, orange peel. I know you East Coast and West Coast folks think we're weird here in the South because we like our knockdown and orange peel and all that yeah. junk. But down there here, it's texture. all level five smooth, <laughs> which is you just do a skin yeah. coat of joint compound is what you're doing yep. at the end instead of spraying on texture. Mm -hmm. But basically the way you do textures is you, uh, you get like this hopper and it's connected to a compressor and there's a few different tips for like light and heavy. Yep. And then you also add water to your joint compound and the kind of heavier or lighter you go also affects the texture yep. and then you spray on a texture that way. Um, yep. That's basically the way you do most textures. Um, and that stuff here is for easy patches, sand. right? Easy yeah, sand. easy sand is what we're going to use for patches. Fun this fact. Is Easy yeah. sand is actually not that easy to sand. <laughs> no. Uh, the all purpose is way this easier, is easier to, to sand. sand. for sure. But yeah. the easy sand is actually quite hard to sand for drywall yes. and stuff. It's harder to sand than spackle. Yep. The only thing it's easier to sand is is, is, is than Bondo, right? Bondo yes. is harder to sand than easy sand. Yeah, definitely. But it, easy sand is harder to sand than everything else. <laughs> so it's yeah. kind of so like, it's, it's a, a little bad, misleading, bad honestly. Name. It should it's be, a bad name. It should be called. It should be not so easy to sand. <laughs> Anyways, they call it easy patch because yeah. it, go ahead. It's really meant yeah. for patches. So this is the five minute. So this is the one that's going to set the quickest. What I mean by set is that after you mix it up with your water and everything in your pan, you've got about five minutes to work with this product before it kind of becomes uh, hard and is no longer mm. muddy mm -hmm. um, because there's there's components in here that once it's you know you mix it with the water, it starts to activate and it's gonna make this product dry quicker. So this five minute, you don't have very long to work with it. So um, this is really something you'd really only use on like a small patch or two, or and just- probably only if you're a professional. Right. Because five <laughs> minutes is uh, not it goes very by, many It minutes. goes by quick. <laughs> yeah, so you gotta be pretty quick. You gotta know what you're doing before I'd mess with the five minute. However, for small little patches or a little crack here or there, um, this one's definitely the fastest. However, this one can bite you in the butt. Even as professionals, I've seen a lot of guys say, oh, I'll get away with using five minute and it starts to cure up and they're not done. Small patches, and, yeah. one or two, that's it. <laughs> yeah, would not mess with more than that. Uh, the most commonly used one that we use often is uh, the 20 minute because it tends to give you the right amount of time. It tends to be just enough to get, you know, whatever yeah. amount of work you need done. And then they do make, you know, 45, a 60, um, 90. there's a 90. And then I think there's even one longer than that, but like a yeah. 210 I've or something, but I don't, we hardly ever use that. Yeah. Special order or something. But um, anyway, so that's easy sand. You know, you typically want to, you know, use um, the appropriate amount of time for the appropriate amount of work. It also depends if you're trying to get it all done at the same time. Yeah. There are times you're doing drywall work and for whatever reason, you're only able to do um, certain areas at a time. Obviously, that's going to slow the project down because with drywall work, the biggest thing you're fighting is dry time. Dry time. So like the all-purpose mm -hmm. compound is way easier to work with it's way easier to sand at the end. So for larger projects, you all, you want to use this for your yes. for your, your drywall work. Uh, but the problem is that this stuff takes sometimes up to 24 hours to dry before yep. you can sand it. And so if you're doing just a few patches and you use this, you gotta wait 24 hours mm -hmm. in between coats even. Mm -hmm. um, so if it needs two or three coats, then you texture it. I mean, you're talking about days if you use this stuff, yep. which is okay on a big drywall job because you're kind of doing the whole house or the whole 
sections or whatever, and you come back to it each, after each day. But this stuff, the five minute, it has five minutes of working time, then it, what, 30 minutes to drive? Yep. Before, yep. you, before you can sand it, the, mm. the like 45 minute probably takes two, three hours to drive before you can sand it. So yep. it really uh, it really depends on what you're trying to accomplish and, and, and the speed and dry times that you need. So, you know, you might have to do a little extra work on sanding, but it saves you all this time in dry time. So it's totally worth it to use these. Um, yeah. Drywall work can be tricky, too, because the dry times really do affect how long the jobs take. Mm -hmm. It's one of the reasons that quoting drywall can be hard. Um, and you can you can actually Mess get yourself into a problem because, for example, those of us around here in Central Texas and really all of Texas, we had a big freeze not so long ago that's not too common around here. And um, basically, we had a few drywall projects where we had to actually rent some heaters and get them into the space because uh, if not, we were just not going to be able to make any it progress. It was never going to try. And so there's times where just, you know, you, you know unfortunately, I didn't really have that accounted for because, well, it was a, a once in a century type freeze and we don't get mm. here very often. But, you know, those things do happen and you know, a lot of humidity will also affect dry times. If it's been raining a lot, storming and, and, and getting real humid, yeah. the mud's just not going to cure. It's not going to set and you won't be able to work on the on, on the next skim coat or whatever, or the texture. Yeah. Um, so if you ever hear a painter or a drywall person say mud, uh, that's what we're, what we're talking about is normally joint, joint compound. Right. Uh, this all purpose stuff. Or, or you could call this mud too once it's mixed up. And it looks like basically like a white, off white mm -hmm. mud. Uh, it's, we're, no, so we're not tr trying to track mud into your home. That's not what we mean. <laughs> uh, so, but it, this is what we call mud, kind of slang Drywall term. mud. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you also have, uh, you have like spackle, you have uh, putty, you have wood fillers. Bondo. Those mm -hmm. have different purposes as well. And so kind of all those, these different options might be a little bit overwhelming to homeowners when they're at a hardware store or something. So just so you know, spackling is really only good for really like small nail holes in drywall. That's mm -hmm. what spackling is for. You can kind of use it a little bit on wood too, but it's not really designed for that as much. You can't texture with it either. You can't all. texture with it or anything. It's just for small nail holes. And if you do bigger patches, mm -hmm. it's not, it doesn't dry up as hard as these do. Mm -hmm. it, it, it is more brittle, it falls apart. So it's not good for larger patches or drywall work. It's really just for small nail holes. So that's mm -hmm. really all that any type of spackling is for. Um, then you have like putties, which are really designed for like filling in small nail holes on wood trim. Um, and then you mm -hmm. have wood fillers, which right. Is designed for self-explanatory. Yeah, <laughs> for wood filling filler. wood. <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, self-explanatory. All right, maybe I'm making something confusing. No, it's no, not, that but one, no. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's a bunch. There, there's also like vinyl spackles and, and yeah. some of those vinyl paste that are also good for different purposes. Right. Um, but for drywall purposes, most of the time for professional patching, mm -hmm. these are like the two different types of products we're using, which come in different sizes and dry times and all that stuff like we mm -hmm. talked about. Um, yeah. For professionals out there, be cautious with heat guns. It, mm -hmm. They're great, but they can also get you into problems. When you're using well, easy sand, on? It basically is a glorified hair dryer. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it kind of is. They look yeah. like a hair dryer. In fact, like some guys dryer. will actually use hair dryers, but anyways, they don't get nearly as hot as an actual heat gun. A thousand degrees. Um, yeah. We'll yeah, 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 yeah. Um, they mm. can definitely speed up the drying process. In fact, have you ever seen a guy sitting there with a the heat gun, you know, uh, on the patch? He's, he's trying to speed up that drying process. Yep. But uh, just be cautious, you professionals out there, or even you DIYers, uh, be cautious because the heat gun, um, yes, especially the too hot, mm -hmm. and the easy sand already has a curing kind of effect. And if you rush it too much, you can actually cause everything you just did to crack. crack and once and it starts off. to crack and fall apart and everything, then you're back to ground zero. You're sanding it all down. You're making a mess, and you're starting yeah, all those over. Heat guns at the at, so. at the base of it are actually like a thousand degrees. You can, if you get too close up on that, you can just burn a hole right through. Your oh wall. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, mm. uh, just be careful. But they do, those are. They're a, a great, great tool. tool. You should, honestly, if you're doing a lot of patch work, all of our guys that do a lot of the drywall work for us, I mean, heat guns are kind of a necessity. They always keep one or two But of them um, yeah. you just want to be cautious. It is, it is a good tool, but it can also bite you in the butt if you try to rush it too much. Yeah. So. Burn you in the butt. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but yeah, uh, that's some drywall work. Easy sand, the not so easy to sand. Not so easy to sand. <laughs> Here, listen, the thing about drywall work is there's nothing easy about it. Um, dry, like, a lot of DIYers probably are comfortable painting a room by themselves. Yeah. Uh, drywall is just not fun to it's not do. Fun. It's, it's messy. not easy to to yeah. to 
master. Mm -mm. Um, it's easier to become a decent painter than it is to become a decent drywaller or yeah. patcher. So uh, I recommend like hiring professionals for most mm -hmm. drywall work if you want it to look really good. Absolutely. Um, and yeah, drywall. Draw, the, the, the unfortunate thing about drywall work is that people are stoked out of their mind to change the color of their home. They're excited right. about it. <laughs> They're, they'll gladly fork over some money to, to get that experience of fresh colors and all that. Mm -hmm. Most of the time when people have drywall work, it means that there was some flooding, there was a leak, mm -hmm. there was stress cracks in the home that they weren't prepared for, and they're normally not excited. A fight in the house. Right, so <laughs> by the house, an, an angry teenager punching the wall. Uh, like normally drywall work is because yeah. of something that, like a problem that has happened right. and people aren't stoked out of their mind to pay for drywall work. Right. Um, and so they're always shocked by the price and it's because it's a lot of work. Yeah. And uh, um, truthfully for like us, we've noticed that, um, you know, sometimes the, the most difficult in, uh, jobs can be drywall jobs. Absolutely. So, um, it's not something that amateur church can just do and make it look like perfect and mm. in invisible repairs. Um, so it is a it is something that you want to hire professionals, but just also know that you know, it does cost some money. Yeah. But I uh, hope that helps you guys out. Thanks for listening and stick around for another episode.